I ask people, especially comedians, to come in here and give me their uh-huh. Mount Rushmore. Oh, gosh. Yeah. And they name seven people. You do understand that Mount Rushmore has four heads. Yeah, but it's just... Okay, go ahead. And a lot of times what I've been getting yes. is that Current comedian says, I can't name somebody from my generation because I'm with them. With them, right. right. So if I said, okay, give me your, your, give me Godfrey's four okay. be- best comedians. It's usually your four best or should be the people that you watch the most. Like you watch video on them the most. And I got Pryor, Carlin, Red Fox, and Paul Mooney. Right. I watch them all the time. And Paul Mooney, oh my God, I I think Paul Mooney doesn't get the respect that he deserves, you know, Mm -hmm. because he wrote for Richard Pryor. He wrote, he wrote for Living Color. Right. Homie the Clown. That was Paul Mooney. He wrote for even the Chappelle show. Wow. I love Paul Mooney. I watch a lot of Paul Mooney. Okay. And I wish Paul Mooney were alive to come on this show. He'd be like, Shannon, this is a very good show. Very, you're He's, brilliant. You're brilliant. You're brilliant. But niggas don't like you. <laughs> Nigga, Shannon Sharp, you a big motherfucker. And you, you will kick a nigga's ass. You didn't put Pryor up there. I did. You put Pryor. Uh, Murphy. Did. That's who you left. No, Murphy. See, I think Mur- Eddie Murphy. Oh, of course, he's a hero of mine. One of the greatest comedic actors. Nobody's fucked right. with Eddie Murphy on the comedy and movies. Right. And you can match any. But there's a lot of funny people, but Eddie Murphy. Right. Is the best. We, I just, I don't think I've seen Eddie Murphy enough as far okay. as specials and mm-hmm. stuff. Okay. But Eddie is up there. Well, well, why? You said top four. That's bullshit. It should be top five. Eddie, let me put up Eddie. Mount Rushmore. My, okay. Who are your four heads you going to put on Mount Well, Rushmore. those are presidents that should have no business up there. Well, we got comedians up there. We're going to put the comedians damn it. up there. All right. I just gave you. <laughs> Red Fox, Red my Fox. Red Fox ain't bad. Yeah. Thank you very much. Right. I, I really like your, your show. It's very good. I watch it all the time. How you doing, sir? Yeah. Anyway, this is Red Fox, and I'm very happy to be on Club Shay Shay. You, you not got, a lot of niggas got a podcast. You got you like you like uh, uh, George Carlin. What is it about? Love Car- George what Carlin. is it about Carlin? His wordplay. It's his wordplay. It's he's it's his his intelligence and how he puts words together. And and listen, everybody has a taste. And Carlin was never lazy with a joke. He always. Because he grew up, his parents were advertising people. His mom and dad were good with words. And he was always, it's his joke writing. It's mm-hmm. just the wordplay. He loved using different words. And so I was like, that's made me focus on words. Because comedy is an art form of words. Right. Syntax. It's about how you say it. Some people, some I see some jokes. And like, even for myself, I'm hard on myself. If I see a joke and it's too lazy, I go, "Mm -mm, it could be better than that. And I watch Carl and I go, damn, even if the joke wasn't that funny to you, but the work he put in it, you go, God damn, that was brilliant. You know what I mean? It's it's like, uh, it's his wordplay and the things that he says about society, calling out white supremacy. A white guy saying it to white people is very important. Yes. An Irish guy from Harlem, it's important that this white guy is saying, you know, y'all ain't shit. You feel me? Has someone ever, have you ever heard a joke? Yeah. And you like, I could have done that joke better. Yes. And then there's some jokes where I go, damn, he got that. That's the best. Or she got that. That was the best take I've seen. I've seen somewhere I could, damn, I could have done that better. Damn, I wish I had that joke. Right. That was perfect. Yeah, of course. A lot of many times you do. So can you do Chappelle? <laughs> yeah. See, I'm going to tell you something, man. This is great. This is great. I love being on Club Shay Shay, bitch. Man, <laughs> I love it. He's like, and, and Chappelle, I've known for since 97, 96, 97. And Chappelle's one of the greatest, but everybody does a Chappelle. So you have to sort of talk like this. Right. And now his voice is a little, you know, I'm, listen, I'm not transphobic. I'm not. I have friends. I have friends. I have a lot of trans friends. And you remember when he got, um, he got, uh, I guess they blocked his show in Minnesota. Right. And at a theater, they were like, the trans community came, yeah. they blocked his show, and then he went to another theater about 20 minutes later and sold that out. Right. He's like, I, I'm, I'm trans. I feel I'm trans because I transferred from one theater to another. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a great transaction, bitch. <laughs> when, I hear, when I hear people talk about him, yes, it's like, it's like he was a prodigy. He yeah. started at a very, very young 14. age. Like, but a lot of comedians don't start until they're in the later twenties, mid twenties. Yeah, I started but, after college, twenty two. So here's the guy that's fourteen, and they're saying he's going to these clubs yeah. where adults yeah. perform. Yeah, and so you knew him. Did you know he was going to become this? No, I didn't. I heard about him. 
Well, actually, when I first got to New York City, one of my first shows was, was with him on the show. It was with him on the show, and he was, uh, I heard his name, Dave right. Chappelle, Dave Chappelle, because he did, uh, he had done, uh, Star Search. Yes. Um, young, and, and even Ed McMahon said, that guy's gonna be a star. Right. Watch. And, People uh, don't remember Star Search. I, and Ed McMahon, before American Idol, yeah. it was Star Search. Four yeah. stars. Four stars. Three stars. Yep. Sinbad came from there. Martin Lawrence. A lot of people that are stars came from there. And I heard about him. I heard about him. Then I was ended up on a show with him. Mm -hmm. I think I had to f go after him. He murdered. I had to go after him. But I heard about him and I knew, okay, this guy is something to watch because everybody, Chappelle, Chappelle, Chappelle. Mm -hmm. And, and I guess a guy, I want to give credit to Tony Woods, who's a, who Chappelle, he took Chappelle under his wing in DC. Tony Woods is another underrated comedian who's fantastic. Um, yeah. So Chappelle, I knew Chappelle was going to be, I didn't know how big until that Chappelle show. I didn't right. know he was going to be like, right. Woo. I mean, he's mad, like right. massive. You I know? mean, cause I, you see him in, uh, um, Nutty Professor. He's Reggie. Killed that. And shit. then you see him in Blue Street. Yeah. And you like, man, dude is, he's amazing. And his comedy, he's an amazing comedian because he loves, I think he loves comedy more than anything. I believe so. Because he puts the time in. He puts the hours in. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you this. I think you had a guest on here mm -hmm. that I disagreed with. Okay. No, and this is no, I, you know, I, you know, I would love to start beef because I want this to go to 60 million. <laughs> I want to call somebody out. I just want to fucking start some shit, but I won't do that. You know what I'm saying? Damn. <laughs> um, but when I'm, Country Wayne was on here, yes. I, first of all, I don't know Country Wayne at all, right. but I watched his video. I, I give him his credit for him making all that money. I was listening to him like, oh, what? how did you do this? Right. You know, I love his hustle. Smart dude. I mean, he making millions off of this shit. Right. I wish I, I could. But he said one statement that I disagreed with, Country. I disagreed with you. What was the statement? I, I think he said, and if I'm wrong, you correct me. Okay. Said something about. If anybody's in a comedy club still, that means you're not doing anything. Something like that mm -hmm. to that. I don't know if he okay. was answering Faison. Right. I think it was him and Faison right. going at it. Because okay. Faison's my dude. Right. Faison. Faison go, everybody be going at Faison. I love Faison goes to everybody else. He's funny. Faison's a funny son of a bitch. Mm -hmm. But he's saying if you're still in the comedy clubs, right. you're not a real comedian. I right. think he said that. Am okay. I wrong? Something to that effect. And I go, but I think he was talking about him. Because okay, like, please, because I was like, you are wrong right. about that shit. Right. I'm in the comedy clubs. DL's in the com comedy clubs are still being built. They're not fading away. Right. If you do theaters, that's like a blessing. Right. But theaters are multi-purpose rooms. Right. Comedy clubs usually are just for comedy. Co comedians of all statures right. do comedy clubs. There's the rare moments you have. The, you know, Chappelle still comes to comedy clubs and works on his shit. Right. Seinfeld, who's a billionaire, still comes to the comedy club. But I think what he was, what where he I, was, I'm just saying, yeah. I might be, I might be in no, misinterpreting. I think it. what he was saying yeah. is that that's his only choice is to do those. The people that you mentioned can do arenas, they can do theaters. Yeah, he's saying that he probably the only thing he can do. Okay, is I'm like shit. Right. I'm, so what does that make me? Because no, it's no, no, not no, easy. No, no. First of all, it's not easy to fill a comedy club. Mm -hmm. Even if it's a 300 seater, 400 seater, it's not easy. Right. Like there's people who have been fortunate, especially with the algorithm. You get the algorithm, you got 8 million followers. Yeah. Just numerically, you're going to fill the shit up. Right. But are you going to put the work in? Are you going to have the performance that, that, that keeps up with it. to match it? Which comedy, I'm going to tell you this. And even Kat said it. You got to, you can't cheat comedy, man. I'm telling you. I, when I first got to New York, you know how many shows I was doing per week? 40 shows a week. 40? You heard what I said. 40, dog. Give me some cognac. Shit. Hold on. Let me get that cognac. Come on, man. Get that cognac. Shit. Hold on, God. Get that shit. Hell yeah. There's only ah, seven. Really? Okay. Godfrey, there's get only that. seven days. Uh, yeah. Mm. So, you ah. you do it. Isn't that how y'all? Yeah. yeah. How are you doing 40 shows in a week? Let me show you. So, a new, when I got to New York City, I remember it was a Tracy Morgan and some other cats and they were like, yo, I said, hey, because in Chicago, we would do, you give me out six or seven shows a week. Yeah. Seven. What are they? And I got, <laughs> I got to New York. I did a show with, uh, I was in Harlem. I did one show. They was like, yo, we about to go. I said, we all going now. Yo, the show's in Brooklyn. Are you coming? You got more shows? Hell yeah. Boom. I hit about five stages. 
that same night. And I said, this is how y'all do it? It's like, hell yeah, we do multiple. The average comedian in New York, and I don't know if this is perfect math, does about between four to seven shows a night. Stage time. We got a lot of stages. We got a lot. Shout out to the Comedy Cellar. That's my spot. Comedy Cellar in New York City. But I was doing five shows a night. Wow. About five shows a night on the weekdays. Then on the weekends, I do a eight or nine. Eight or nine shows. Yeah, it would be me, Patrice O'Neill, Bill Burr, you know, Keith Robinson. It was all of us. Wanda Sykes. Wanda Sykes Hall. That's when I knew Wanda Sykes Hall. That's my girl. Yeah, Juan is Juan is the best. But we were that's how you did it. You just ran all over the city and did, and there was sometimes there'd be a club down the block. So you can go on stage there, you go over there, hit that. Yeah. So I would start at about seven AM at seven PM and then end at around three AM. So I was doing comedy and this is consistent. There's no breaks. This is consistent shit. Comedy takes that much work. It's really a sport. It's a sport. You got to go out there and you got to put the reps in, is period. That, you can't cheat it. I don't give a fuck who you are. You can't cheat it. Is that how you get good at the craft? You goddamn right. And then you and you know what's funny is when you're on stage, they see the difference. They see the difference. They see the wordplay. They see the transition. You get those nuances as you stay on stage a lot. You have to. Right. I don't know. Somebody told me it was a young conversation. No, one day. They're going to be able to skip steps in comedy. I said, just because you get on a TV show faster than a veteran don't mean you're good at it. Because I'm not trying to be an asshole, but a lot of these companies are skipping a lot of co comedians that are ready. There's a lot of, because people ask me, where are you getting your next well, Netflix? I said, they don't really approach me. They don't really approach a lot, not just me, but they don't approach a lot of us. They, they've they been giving specials to people that don't even have an hour. You can tell somebody ain't ready by the way they edit it. You go, oh, that motherfucker started bombing at 15 minutes. That motherfucker started bombing at 20. They're not, because comedy oh, okay. takes, yeah, you have to be ready. You have to put your time in. And the people that are ready are like, hey, I'm ready for a special. They're not, that's why a lot of people are putting their shit up on, um, net, on I'm sorry, YouTube. YouTube. Example, Ali Sadiq. If you ain't watched Domino Effect, you're out of your damn mind. Domino Effect one, two, and three. He just put three. He's all on. It's all on YouTube. Right. It's all on YouTube. His guy has been ignored. He had a chance to. He's been ignored, but he's putting it. You're counting on yourself. You got Andrew Schultz. There's Shane Gillis. There's a whole bunch of guys putting shit up on YouTube. That's what I'm gonna have to do. Oh, and by the way, Shannon, I'm starting a GoFundMe. Yeah, that's right. I'm starting to GoFundMe to raise money to do my own special. Yes. Man, I'm not gonna bullsh. What? Why, you bull why, why am I bull jiving? I'm not bull jiving. I'm raising money. Listen, go fund me. Go to GoFundMe Godfrey Special. I'm raising money for real. I'm taking donations. No different than a church and a preacher. I'm taking donations because Jesus wants it. Ah! But yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm raising my own money. I've been offered some money because listen, to do a special, it's a big, it's budgets. It can go from 100,000 to 200,000. It depends. Right. Netflix pays for all that. Right. Oh, Amazon pays for all that. But if they're not coming to me and coming to some other, uh, some of the other people, I gotta, I'm, I gotta raise I gotta money put, on my I own. Put it, yeah. And then it'll be mine and I can own it. You know what I'm saying? Right. I don't know. But so that's what's going on. There's a lot of comedians, men and women that are being ignored. I got, you got great comedians like Yamanika Sanders. You got Marina Franklin. You got a lot of great people. My man, Dante Nero. You got Ruben Paul. You got a lot of great comedians. Tony Rock. You got a lot of great comedians that are really putting in the work and are ready to do one, two, three, let's go. I mean, listen, they're giving specials to the same people every time I see the same people, which some of them do deserve it. I go, yeah, I get why. But man, there's a lot of people just waiting on their first one. And then they're giving it to people who have been doing comedy two years. So it's bullshit. Means, it's bullshit. How has social media helped or hurt comedy? Listen. <sighs> there's, okay, I think it's 50-50. It's hurt, it hurt comedy as far as, there, I believe, this is my, I believe there's a lot of bums in comedy. A lot of mediocre bums in comedy. Because of social media, because they're seeing, okay, I had a friend call me the other day. I haven't seen him since college. He was like a more of a business guy, corporate. And when I you started- You got the same number since college? No, not called me, sorry. Facebook me, okay. that shit. Okay. Right? No, he actually called me because I, I had given him my number a few years ago. Then he goes, yo, um, I, want, I need to call you. I need to talk to you. I was like, oh, talk to me about what? 
you know? And I know what he does. He's a corporate guy. So when I was doing my comedy, being broke and shit, he goes, how's that little comedy thing you're doing? Oh, little. Yes. Little. They would say that. How's that little comedy thing? Mm -hmm. I say, man, I'm just doing it, man. Come to a show. They would never come. Right. Boom. Those are the kind of guys that go see the more famous guys. Yes. But won't come to your shit. Yeah. I said, cool. So now, years later, he goes, yo, you know, I've been writing like comedy, this, da, 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 da. You know, I was thinking about, and I said, why? What do you, for what? Why, why are, are you, you corporate about guy? I mean, ain't you yeah, at JP well, Morgan? Word. Ain't you at- word. Yeah. We're, we're older now. Why are you thinking about comedy? I said in my head, he's been watching social media. He goes, well, I've been watching a lot of video. So now you think it's easy. Ah. Uh, That's the only thing I think social media has done is they, they make it look like it's fucking easy. The YouTube tutorials. The, the, <laughs> <laughs> That's like this. Hi, welcome. How to be a tight end. <laughs> It's so easy. <laughs> How to be the tight end. Real easy. It's the same. You can yes. know. You got to show up to practice and you got to put the fucking reps in. I'm promising you because when I first started doing comedy, I was funny. I was fun. It was me. It was Corey Holcomb, who's another funny, crazy bastard. Corey Holcomb. Yeah. Corey Holcomb, who I brought into the game, by the way. You guys can thank me for Corey Holcomb because I brought him to Amateur Night. I brought him to Amateur Night, made him do comedy because I've known him since I was a teenager and he's always been a very, very, very funny mm-hmm. man. Um, yeah, it's, it, you got to put in the reps. And we were all funny at the beginning. Right. D. Ray Davis was all funny. We didn't have the jokes yet. You know, we didn't have nothing to say, right. but we had funny quips here and there. Right. It, you, but it takes years to get your voice in comedy. It's 10 years. 10 years. I'm going to fuck. Here's, here's an example. I was sitting with Seinfeld. Yes, I said it. I was sitting with Seinfeld. He was doing a, a documentary called Comedian. I'm in that mm-hmm. documentary. This is when he was making his comeback after Seinfeld. He was coming back to comedy. Mm-hmm. So he would come to the comedy cellar and hang out with me and hang out with all of us. And one day he asked me, how long you been doing comedy? I said, and I stuck my chest. I said, nah, about nine years now, going on 10. He's like, okay, you're a nine-year-old in comedy then. That's your comedy age. Always remember that. That's your age in comedy. I never forgot that. Wow. My age in comedy is about 27 years now. Yeah, I've been doing it almost 30 years. You know what I mean? And then, and I see, I see why it takes so long because it's effortless for me now. But, but I still see the difficulty in it because I can do one hour. Now I got to do a whole different hour. When you see Chris Rock, Chris Rock is a technician. He'll go in, come in, in the comedy club, work on his shit, work on his shit. Seinfeld does the same shit. Ray Romano still comes in. These guys are multimillionaires, but because it's a craft, because the comedy is always better than you. I always, comedy is always better than you because you always got to redo something. You always right. got a story to tell. You never, if you get too conceited in a lot, and that's another thing about social media. It's making these motherfuckers cocky. They come around thinking, because, hey, man, I got 10 million followers. I go, well, you got to follow me tonight. So, wow. Shit. We'll see what that shit does to you. Okay, buddy. You know, I know I'm glad that you have 10 million. I'm, right. I'm glad you got your little sock puppet thing. Good for you. Right. But we're about to do the real shit and uh, good luck following me. But you know, it takes, and listen, I, it, you know, the, these, these younger cats that come in, they can't help when they were born. They were born in the social media phase. But I try to tell them, dog, doing a sketch is different than stand up. Please, is. Lord, I'm telling you. Be careful because you're in a time continuum when you're on stage and people done paid their money. They done sent their kids a babysitter and motherfuckers are sitting there like this. All right, motherfucker. Shit. Hundred dollars the goddamn ticket, man. It better be. I mean, some ha ha's in this motherfucker. <laughs> Real shit. And so you got an hour. And what if the dude before you just did a hot 30 in front of you that the, the feature just smoked it. Now you got to do your shit. I'm like, I'm, mm. it's a re, it's, it's the hardest form of entertainment, comedy, which gets no respect, barely wins awards. Comedy is the hardest. You know why? You know why people heckle? You know why people heckle, Shannon? What? Because everybody has a sense of humor. You make somebody laugh. People over here make somebody laugh. You was funny at the barbecue. You was funny at the water cooler, right? Everybody's yeah. funny. Right. You were even funny on the field. You used to talk shit on the field. I did. You did a commercial. I remember the commercial that you did. You'd be like, yo, what you gonna do, man? It was a commercial. Yeah. So that's funny. But people go, okay, well, I make people laugh. There's a man or a woman on stage making people laugh, but I'm funny too. So I'm not even gonna show you respect. You go to the opera, ain't nobody talking, are they? You go to the opera, I go to the opera. I'm, I'm cultured. You go to the opera, Figaro, Figaro. 
And someone's like, man, sing that shit. And he'd be like, Negro, Negro. Yo, no, you're not going to say that because you don't have a sense of opera. Right. You go to the ballet. I've been to the ballet. Shit. I go to that shit. Mm -hmm. You know, and nobody says, man, that girl flexible than a motherfucker. Right? Yo, why that dude balls out? Yo. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, you, cause you have a respect, cause right. it's something you can't do. But for some reason, comedy is that one art form where everybody feels they're your equal. Yeah. Even the comedians have been doing it two years, think they're your equal. And I don't like it. I think comedy should be like the army. Like, the, I, that's what I love about the armed forces. I'm a general. You're a fucking cadet. You stand at attention when I walk in. When I see George Wallace, I just saw, I just did a show at Arsenio Hall. By the way, one of the nicest men I've ever met. I've never met Arsenio. Arsenio's a fucking legend, but people don't understand. Yeah. Arsenio, I went, he goes, and he goes, Godfrey, man, it's good seeing you, brother. I've been watching you. You know how his finger? I yeah. said, Godfrey, I've been watching you. Yeah, he was Even way back there when he pointed that yeah, finger. Yeah, he's, like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, Godfrey. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> he goes, I've been watching you since the pandemic. And I said, I got to salute you. You're a general, man. Right. You're a five star. Right. We got to I like rank and file has to happen. It's like in the rookie. You know, I, you know, I, I, I walked on the team at Illinois. No, oh, did you? I did. I, I on a dare. I did it because I, uh, I was doing, trying to do track and field and, and I wasn't really sure. And then this dude named Marlon Primus, I'm saying his name. Marlon Primus, he came up with Henry Jones. Yeah. And, so this dude was so talented. He played our free, he was our free safety. Okay. Six foot four, could throw the ball a mile. Cause sometimes we'd be on the field just fucking around practicing and stuff. And he could throw the, I said, my God, man, you can throw. He could punt. I go, how come you're not a quarterback? He goes, because in Illinois, they didn't want any black quarterbacks. They mm -hmm. kept all the white. They, they converted all the black dudes mm -hmm. into defensive guys. Right. And he said, and he was from LA. So he'd be like, yo, cuz. He's like, you should, you should try out, cuz. I dare you. Try out. And so I tried out and I made the team. Didn't start. I was the meat squad, but right. hell, I was I mean, amongst, you made it. I made it. I made the team. I made the squad. I was on there for like three years. Want to join Club Shay Shay? Become an official member by hitting that subscribe button where you never know who's going to be joining us for drinks and conversation. Don't be late to the party because you know we like to do something before two something.